And praise God that we are all gathered together on this sunny but chilly morning. Um, as the song said, may the Holy Spirit rain down upon us this morning and um, inspire us, comfort us, and empower us to not only receive the good news, but to live the good news. Do we have any announcements this morning? Denise? Um, I've been announcing this every week the last couple Sundays, but young Owen's birthday is actually coming up on Tuesday of this week. She will be 90 years old. We'd love to give her a card shower. I know that probably a lot of you have already sent those cards out. I have her address on the back bulletin board here. And um, actually, her apartment number is different from what it's I have. Six. Yeah, oh, no. I changed that on there. I'll be going on Tuesday. Birthday, so if anybody has to see her, just let me know. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you, Kristen. But um, I know she'll really enjoy those, so thanks to everybody that's done that. Thank you, Denise. And I saw Joan uh, last week, and um, her cast is pink, and she was wearing a pink top, so she was perfectly coordinated. Um, any other announcements? Joy? I just thought I want to ask the uh, last time I was there for the uh, Second place of the fourth. Um, we're no longer taking the big vitamin containers. Um, we're only taking the film into the facilities. So, along with windows as far as the windows for the purposes of that Matthew project, which we're still doing that work. Okay, thank you. Which reminds me, I've got a bunch of pill bottles in, in my bag there to put in the, in the bin. Um, anyone else? Um, please. Uh, Church Council meeting is uh, tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m. And um, I had an announcement, it just slipped my mind. Um, I'll stick it in later in the middle of the sermon or something, if I think of it. Um, if there are no other announcements, let us open our worship with a word of prayer. God who gives all good things. We thank you for this time for us to come together and show our devotion to you and our love to one another. Truly, this community is a gift, and truly, each and every person here is a gift. We thank you, Lord, for all of your gifts. May we live lives that show gratitude for all that you do for us, and may we share abundantly for what you have given us, because you give us without end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our opening hymn will be Where He Leaves Me. It's number 338 in the hymn. <laughs> I'll go with you. 
share with one another those concerns that are on our hearts, those people that need prayer, and those situations that we know we need God's help in. But let us also share with one another our victories and our joys and our celebrations and all of the places that we have seen God at work in the world. Do you have anything this morning? Mike. Just like uh, prayer for the uh, Homer Merwin family, uh, Homer passed away early Wednesday morning. So the prayers for Homer's family. What was his last name? Merwin. My wife's on. My condolences as well as my prayers. Anyone else? Uh, Carrie? I have a praise. Say it's menial to those for the excited to us. Um, after, uh, 14 months after Dad's passing, he finally has a headstone. So, oh, nice. Praise I'm really God. Excited. <laughs> that is important. Um, I saw another hand. Uh, Greg? I need to ask for prayers for my wife. She's uh, just leaving Dad back. Um, poor Lenny and Pat run back. Some medical problems. And for my sister in law, Sandy Cassidy, who broke five ribs. Oh, oh my goodness. We will be praying for Marilyn, Lenny, and Pat, and Sandy. Joy. Thanks for the prayers and cards for Jeffrey and the kids making progress. But we thought that the surgery being Tuesday, last Tuesday, Good. Um, yeah, I, I spoke to him, and uh, yeah, he was kind of telling me how he was shocked that he wasn't able to get up and go out and drive and <laughs> dance and jig and all sorts of things. So, um, but his spirit sounded good. Anyone else? Denise. Thank you to everybody for the prayers for my dog. <laughs> <laughs> he went through surgery really well, and they had they took out a really big cyst. He had like a cyst that was the size of a orange. 
Ooh. and but he did really well under anesthesia and he's doing really well so and I'm doing really well <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for all the prayers and grateful that the uh, shadow came through that well and that you came through that well <laughs> anyone else Phil uh, so we go Brandon and uh, young man from Lexington his name is Craig Weston he's had an automobile accident maybe a couple of months ago he's out of the hospital but now he's uh, he's got a tremendous anger issue mm -hmm. so uh, we need to pray okay we need to pray we need to pray for Craig um, that he finds peace acceptance. Rita. Prayers for the Allen Weaver family. He was a classmate. Prayers for Allen Weaver. Glenn. There are prayers for the Pat Kellums family also. What was the last name? Kellums. Um, and I would like uh, prayers for um, the family of uh, Charlene Eichelberger, um, my cousin, who uh, passed away last week, um, kind of unexpectedly. Um, so uh, just prayers for the Eichelberger family. Um, partially prayers for people being able to spell Eichelberger. But uh, if there's nothing else, let us uh, take all these. Oh, Bill. I'm doing better, um, still not up to full strength, but uh, every, I'll say every week I notice some improvement. Um, so, and thank you all for your prayers and uh, your support. I've actually been bragging on you all um, this past week. Uh, had a uh, <clears throat> district clergy meeting on Thursday and uh, we were sharing Prayer requests, and I ask that the uh, district clergy just give prayers of thanks because of how well you all have been taking care of me and how patient you've been with me, and just how much uh, concern you've had for, for my recovery. Um, and I know there are a lot of churches out there that would uh, just not care as much as you all do. So know that you've been bragged on, and know that you're being prayed for. Uh, with prayers of gratitude and thanks. Elaine. Uh, we work the food pantry, and uh, we had 17 families, which includes six poor people. So um, everybody, thank you, and the pantry is well supplied, and we have plenty of money, and you're doing great. Yes, and, and thank you, Elaine, for helping me let me out. I know you didn't plan on that, but uh, uh, I've done it by myself before, and it's you feel like a one-armed paper hanger when you're. Um, so, um, if there's nothing else, let us then uh, take all these concerns and these praises to God in prayer. Loving Lord, you sent your very Son to us as the greatest gift that could ever be given. And you bestow upon us families and friends, communities, people that we love and care for. We thank you, Lord, for giving us these, uh, these people, these relationships. But relationships carry with them other feelings as well. Sometimes we grieve losses when a relationship is gone. Sometimes we find ourselves angry when we don't understand what is going on with us or we can't accept the reality around us. And sometimes we worry when those that we care about are sick and in pain. Help us, Lord, to see in all of these things your presence, that your spirit is with us, that you hold our hands and that you hold our hearts. Help us, Lord, in all things that challenge us to put our whole trust in you. 
and give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear the way that you are loving us in ways that we can neither comprehend and understand. We rely upon our human senses. And we thank you, Lord, for all of the ways that you equip us to love one another, the spiritual gifts that you give us, the talents and skills that you not only bestow upon us, but call us to uh, practice, that you call us to hone and perfect. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that empowers every good thing that we do, that empowers every good, holy, and loving thought that we have. Indeed, Lord, when we stop and look at it, we live fully in relationship with you now, even though much of the time we fail to recognize it. So we thank you, Lord, especially for the gift of yourself, for the gift of your healing, for the gift of your comfort, for the gift of your spirit, and for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as our body comes forward to share with us the scripture, let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear the word of the Lord through the words of Scripture that Bonnie is sharing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 11. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. But I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise, persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived, what God has prepared for us, for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the think, deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man, except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. And there was some confusion on my part this week um, and having trouble there between 1 Corinthians 2 and 1 Corinthians 12 and I clarified with Denise that it was indeed 1 Corinthians 2 that's not the scripture so you did everything fine buddy do not feel bad you were perfect um Indeed, total, well, absolutely, totally my fault, but it was 1 Corinthians 12. Um, so, I'll read that. And thank you, buddy, for sharing that with us. It's always good to hear more scripture. And, and I can see you like, oh my gosh, but not you at all. Not you at all. <laughs> and um, my mistake, but I don't really care, because like I said, it's always good to hear more scripture. Um, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes, 
Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still yet another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. This is also the word of God for the people of God. Please pray with me. May your spirit be with us, Lord. May your spirit touch us. And may we become aware not only of our own gifts, but of the giftedness of others, that we might all work together as one body, serving you, Lord, and serving our neighbor in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. So that should disavow all of you with any notion that I'm perfect, right? So, is that devastating for anybody to hear that I'm not perfect? Only me. Only devastating to me. So, and I'm going to, for right now, move over here because Arlene's car is catching the sun and shining right in. Um, kind of blinding. Uh, that's not your fault either. Um, that's just the time of day. Um, In our world today, there is division and separation, fear and distrust. And it's not just in the world, it's not just in politics, it's not just over different opinions about vaccines and masks and COVID. It's within the church. It's between churches, between denominations. And it's within our families. Hopefully, we all have peaceful and loving and, and quiet families, but even in the most peaceful and loving family, there's going to be times when we disagree. There are going to be times when we don't really understand. How can you think that? How can you believe that? And the worst of all, I think, is how can you feel that way or think that way about me? Because after all, it's all about ourselves, right? Um, Every thought, every idea, every opinion, and every attitude that we have, we have it because we believe it to be right. Isn't that just obviously true? We don't believe things because we think they're wrong. We believe it because we're convinced it's true. But when we encounter somebody else who is likewise equally convinced that their thought, their idea, their attitude, their belief, is also true. And if we don't examine ourselves, we go through life wondering, what's wrong with them? Why don't they get it? Why can't they see what's so plainly obvious? Which is also what the other people are thinking too, isn't it? The church in Corinth is no different from us in that regard. The church in Corinth was filled with division and dissension and disagreement and 
fact, that's the reason Paul wrote this letter, to try to address the divisions within the church in Corinth. Now, Corinth was a difficult place for the church to get going. Um, Corinth was kind of the Las Vegas of the ancient world. Um, little geography lesson. Corinth is in Greece, and Greece is basically a, a, a peninsula, but it's a peninsula that has a peninsula off of it, and they're almost equal in size. And the two peninsulas are connected by an isthmus, a little narrow strip of land. At its narrowest point, it's only four miles wide. And in the Roman world, like in our world, getting merchandise shipped from the place where it was produced to the place where people could buy it involved transportation. And in Corinth, right there on that little strip of land, it was an ideal place to be a transportation hub. To the east is the Aegean Sea, and to the west is the Ionian Sea, and to the south is the Mediterranean Sea. And as ships would sail from Rome and the western part of the empire to Ephesus or Jerusalem or places in the eastern part of the empire, they had two choices. Sail around the south end of Greece, right out into the Mediterranean, which was stormy much of the year. Dangerous, lots of shipwrecks. But if they sailed through the nice, safe Ionian Sea, through the Gulf of Corinth, and unloaded the merchandise in Corinth and just lugged it four miles over to the Aegean Sea and put it on another ship, they didn't lose as many ships. And in fact, it was quicker. Uh, some brilliant Greek figured out that actually, if we put down logs and made a stone road, we could just pull the ships up to the logs and roll the ship the four miles, which is what they did in Paul's day. But that meant lots of money, lots of commerce, lots of merchant sailors. And wherever you have money and sailors and business, you also have all sorts of side businesses that cater to the worldly desires of all of these people who are there for money. Money itself is a worldly desire. But there was also lots of gambling, lots of prostitution, lots of drinking. Corinth was one of the largest cities in the Roman Empire precisely because it offered anything anybody could want. When Paul brought the good news of Jesus Christ to Corinth, the church took root and it did grow, but there were a lot of differences in the people that were accepting Jesus and joining the church. Some of them were rather wealthy merchants. Some of them had profited off of all of the businesses and commerce in Corinth. But still others were like the dock workers, the, the poor people who were dragging those ships over those logs those four miles. Now, four miles is not far as far as one end of the Mediterranean to the other. But I'm pretty sure if you're pulling a ship loaded with goods, it's a long way. So you had economic divisions. And within Corinth, it brought people from all over the empire there, attracted by this commerce. And so you had Romans. You had Greeks, you had Egyptians, you had people from the eastern parts of the empire, um, you had slaves, you had free people. And each of these groups saw things their own way. They had their own perspective. And when they came together in the church, in the church where Jesus Christ makes us all one, they brought with them all of their background, all of their culture, all of their opinions and attitudes and ideas and beliefs, 
and they're learning from each other about Jesus Christ. Paul got them started, but they had to figure it out after Paul left on their own. And they were a spirit-filled church, filled with different gifts from the Holy Spirit. And it wound up that these different groups did the same thing with the spiritual gifts that they did with their economics and their attitudes and their opinions. They decided that some were more valuable than others. Some were more correct than others. Some were more Christ-like than others. And that was tearing the church in Corinth apart. And so Paul writes a letter, and actually the letter of 1 Corinthians is not the first letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. We know this because in 1 Corinthians he refers to a previous letter he had written. We don't have that letter. But it's believed that Paul probably wrote more letters to the church in Corinth than any other church, because they needed a lot of help. In our passage today, Paul's addressing this issue of the different gifts. And his list of gifts that he gave, that's not exclude, that's not all the gifts that there are. I think Paul was just highlighting the particular gifts that were causing problems in Corinth. And Paul makes the point that each gift is given by God out of God's wisdom, as God chooses. And so somebody who perhaps has the gift of preaching and leading worship is not more important than somebody who has the gift of humble service, somebody who has the gift of administration or handling finance, somebody who has the gift of prayer, somebody who has the gift of service out in the world, somebody who has the gift of a missionary heart. They're all important to spreading the good news of Jesus Christ in the world. They're all important to being a full functioning community. But the Corinthians valued certain things more than others. And probably, in fact I would say certainly, the Corinthians thought that whatever gifts they and their friends had, those were the important, really spiritual, important, godly gifts. But the other groups thought the same thing. And I would be absolutely certain that there were also people in the church in Corinth who didn't value their own giftedness, who felt like we often do. What can I do? What difference can I make? I have nothing to contribute. And I think that's the saddest thing of all. Because God has given each and every person gifts, gifts for service and ministry, that come alive and are empowered when we receive Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But many of us think our gifts are small. Many of us think that our gifts don't really contribute much. Many of us don't value the gifts that God has given us because we don't see ourselves as important. We don't see ourselves as anybody who can really make a difference. But it's God's wisdom that gifted each and every one of us. And there is no Christian anywhere in the world who is not gifted by God for ministry. Just this morning, this morning I heard a quote that said, everybody is called into ministry, but most of us don't know it. And ministry doesn't mean standing up here. Ministry means all of the things that God calls us to do. To care for one another, to care for the world, to make the kingdom of God more real, to share the good news, to tell people about Jesus Christ, and to show people 
of being filled with Christ looks like in the world. Every one of us is different. If you are one of those people who feels like you don't have anything to contribute, or if you're one of those people who perhaps feels like, I'm older now, I can't do as much, it's not true. So many times, an elderly person who's maybe losing their mobility um, will tell me that they feel bad because they can't do what they used to do for the church. It's not true. They can. They can do the most important thing and pray. Empower the church by their prayers. Not everybody needs to be a carpenter. Not everybody needs to be a bricklayer, and not everybody needs to be a teacher, and not everybody needs to be an entertainer. But we all need the gifts that God has given each of us to be put into use. And they're all valuable because each one of us is valuable. We're valuable because God says so. And we know that we are valuable because God gave his son to show us the value that God places on us. When we encounter Christians with different beliefs, different ideas, different practices, we may not agree with their beliefs and their practices. But I will testify that God is at work in those Christians, in those denominations, in those groups, giving different gifts, giving a different witness that is valuable for all of us. Maybe we don't agree with it, but there's something in it that we need. I've often said that in the Methodist Church, how important it is that we have a good, strong core of conservative Christians who keep the whole church grounded in biblical faithfulness. But I also strongly believe that we also need a good, strong core of progressive Christians because they keep our minds open, they keep us seeking truth beyond what we already know, and they keep us faithful to outward mission and justice. We may not agree with the thoughts and beliefs, but the gifts that each brings is absolutely necessary to the full, fruitful functioning of the church. And we know this because God has gifted people differently from us for service. And as Paul says in our passage, nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean they're right about everything. And again, I'm not right about it. But God and the Spirit are. So today, this week, to live the call, I invite you to consider what your gifts are. How are you living them out in the world? If you happen to be one of those people who feels like your gifts are small or don't matter, Ask God to show you the importance of them. Because they are important. And when you encounter Christians with different ideas and opinions than yours, thank God for the difference. Ask God, what is the witness here to me? How can I recognize the Holy Spirit in the other? Because God himself witnesses through Scripture that everybody who claims Jesus is Lord does so by the same Spirit that we do. So give thanks for the differences. Give thanks for your own gift. Give thanks for the gift in your community. And in all things, give thanks to God for the gift of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that not only saves us all, but empowers us to help save the world. Amen. Let us now offer a prayer of thanks to our Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You love your people as a bridegroom loves his bride. And you created each person as your unique beloved. You equip us for your service with a variety of gifts, that we may continue the mission of redeeming all mankind for your glory. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He commands us to love one another and to serve in the world as he did. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Empower us to work together using our very gifts to be witnesses to all the world, proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. Reveal to us the spiritual gifts we are to use in this mission and guide us to do all things for your glory and not our own. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn, We have a story to tell to the nations. shall turn to light when all of the gifts that God has given to all of the church are brought to bear to shine the light of Christ into the darkness and the light of Christ is the love and grace of God so learn your gifts learn to use your gifts share with each other the gifts that we see in each other so that we all might be empowered and encouraged and grow in the trust and faith that God truly is working among us and through us. 
So go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be gifted, because you are a gift. Amen. Amen.